Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello everyone, Rahul Chai here, trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor. You see, a couple of weeks back, a market expert posted an interesting query on his Twitter account. Here's what he asked. If IC engines, which is the internal combustion engines, are on their way out, does it make sense to invest in ethanol at all? Or if EVs, electric vehicles are the future, then why not invest in that story only or invest in both not knowing what happens in future? Your view. I think that's a very relevant question and the one that is on the minds of plenty of investors out there. Although the ethanol story is not exactly hogging the limelight these days, there was a time when ethanol stocks were on fire. This was in the wake of the government implementing the ethanol blending policy. In this policy, all the petrol sold in the country will have to be blended with 20% ethanol by 2025. This ratio stands at 10% currently. Now, needless to say, this generated a lot of interest in ethanol stocks and turned many of them into multi-baggers. However, if EVs or electric vehicles are to replace petrol engines, does this not weaken the ethanol story? Isn't it better to bet on EV stocks than go all gaga over ethanol? Well, let us take a deep dive into the world of value investing and see if there is any solution to this dilemma. Let us see if the wisdom of people like Ben Graham and Warren Buffett can help us here. Now, before I do that, let me tell you that I am not going to make any stock recommendations in this video. I am going to discuss investment strategy and processes that should hopefully make you a more intelligent investor. Therefore, if you are looking for stock tips, then I am sorry to say that this video may not meet your expectation. However, if you are interested in learning about intelligent investing from the greats of the investment world, then please continue watching the video. Now, coming back to the topic, you see there are two definitions of investing proposed by the investment great Benjamin Graham. One of these is very famous while the other not so much. Here's the definition of investment that's very famous. An investment operation is one which upon thorough analysis promises safety of principle and a satisfactory return. Operations not meeting these requirements are speculative. I think this definition is a work of pure genius. It summarizes sound sensible investing in the most economical terms possible and with the least amount of ambiguity. I don't think anyone else has been able to come up with a better definition of investment in as many or lesser number of words. For example, consider these three terms in the definition, thorough analysis, safety of principle and satisfactory return. Although the terms might appear indefinite and vague, their meaning is clear enough to prevent serious misunderstanding. The term thorough analysis means that you have to study the facts related to the company like its financial statements. You have to ensure safety by paying attention to both the quality of the underlying issue as well as the price that you are paying for it. And last but not the least, satisfactory return would mean returns that should be big enough to beat inflation and can be a combination of capital gains plus dividends. As you can see, Benjamin Graham has almost all the bases covered. And this is why I call this definition of investment as the best out there. Now let us move on to a second definition of investment, which is not that famous, but is equally effective in my view. His second definition is an investment operation is one that can be justified on both qualitative and quantitative grounds. Now what is qualitative and quantitative? Let us find out. Graham was of the view that an analysis of any stock or bond is of two types, qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis consists mainly of a study of the financial statements of the company. These are things like the debt to equity ratio, the earnings growth and the earnings power, dividend history also, 
assets and liabilities and operating statistics like the return ratios and profit margins and others. Qualitative analysis on the other hand consists mainly of the nature of the business, its future prospects mainly and the quality of the management. So if I were to take some of the best companies in India say like Page Industries or Asian Paints or even Titan Industries for that matter, their historical growth rates, their return ratios, their margins will all come under the quantitative analysis. However, their future prospects, the quality of the management and the competitive advantages will all form a part of the qualitative analysis. Now the question is which one of the two should you give more importance to? Qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis? Well, it goes without saying that quantitative analysis is more analysis friendly. The data is easy to find, they are fewer in number and one can draw reliable conclusions from the quantitative analysis of a business. On the other hand, factors for qualitative analysis like the future prospects, the moat of a company or even the quality of the management are not that analysis friendly. They cannot be quantified and even if you end up quantifying them, there is no way to tell whether your numbers are biased or are a true reflection of the qualitative strengths of the company. Put differently, if you think the fair value or the intrinsic value of a stock is rupees 100 per share based on its historical performance, that is using a quantitative approach and you want to pay a 50% premium because you think the future prospects are good and the management is of great quality, there is no way to know whether the 50% premium is adequate or whether it should be higher or lower. Ben Graham was of the view that in the absence of any mathematical controls, investors tend to get carried away and end up paying a huge premium for prospects and management quality. In fact, I think that stock price bubbles are formed precisely because of this reason. Since qualitative factors like management quality and prospects are hard to quantify, one can give any PE multiple to a stock under the garb of these factors. And gullible investors often become a victim of this game. They are the ones who usually end up holding these stocks at very high PEs. And therefore when the reality strikes and it turns out that the premium paid for quality was way too much, share prices crash and these investors lose their shirts. Now Ben Graham had a brilliant solution to save investors from this disaster. As his definition of investment suggests, an investor should not invest in a stock unless it satisfies both the quantitative as well as the qualitative criteria. Now a stock that is still loss making but has a great management team and a great future is not investment as per Graham because the quantitative basis of approval is lacking. Likewise, if a company has a sound financial history but a poor outlook or has a bad management team, then one should reject the stock as it fails on the qualitative parameters. It is sound quantitatively but qualitatively it is not up to the mark. This was a stock to be considered as an investment, it should clear both qualitative as well as quantitative parameters. Graham was of the view that even though stock is very good qualitatively, one should not pay too much premium over what it is worth quantitatively. So for example, if you think a stock deserves a P multiple of 15 to 18 X because of its quantitative parameters, one should not buy it beyond a P multiple of say 25 to 30 times even though qualitatively it is the best stock out there. So even though Graham wants a stock to clear both the quantitative as well as qualitative parameters, he does not want you to pay a very high premium for the strong qualitative factors. He believes that these factors are hard to quantify and secondly, if you get into the habit of paying premium for quality on a consistent basis, then you will end up justifying any PE under the garb of quality. You will end up paying a PE of 50x, 100x and even 150x and still call it a value buy. So the bottom line is that when it comes to investing from a value point of view, consider both the quantitative as well as the qualitative aspects but don't buy into a stock where the qualitative factors are taking a turn for the worse or where you are asked to pay a very high premium for quality. 
say for example a stock out there is worth buying on quantitative grounds but if you are convinced that the future is not great or the management not good then you should not buy the stock. Also if the management is great and the future also looks quite good then do consider the stock but see to it that you are not paying a very high premium for these qualitative factors. If you are being asked to buy this stock at a PE of 60 to 70x then this is too high in my view and you should again reject the stock. So don't buy if the quality of management is not good and don't buy if the premium being asked is too much. Now let's use this framework to analyze two stocks, one each from the ethanol space and the electric vehicles or the EV space. Praj Industries which among other things builds ethanol plants and is considered to be one of the front runners when it comes to playing the ethanol theme is a very good stock quantitatively. It has never made a loss in the last 10 years, has a strong balance sheet, strong margins and has regularly paid out dividends. Qualitatively also the stock has a great future and I don't see any particularly negative coverage of the company's management. Therefore it ticks both the quantitative as well as the qualitative boxes. However the stock currently trades at PE of 45 times its all time high trailing 12 month earnings. Now as our framework says even though stock can be justified on both quantitative as well as qualitative grounds you should not buy it if you are paying a huge premium for the underlying quality. Is this true in the case of Praj Industries? Are you being asked to shell out a huge premium? Well this is something that you need to figure out for yourself. I am sure with the framework we just discussed it won't be a very difficult thing to do. Now let's consider one of the electric vehicles or EV stocks, Electra Green Tech. Again on both qualitative as well as quantitative grounds it's a good stock, good financial track record, strong balance sheet, strong margins, strong outlook and strong management as well. But the PE or the stock trades at a PE multiple of almost 100 times its trailing 12 month earnings. Is this the right premium to pay for a strong future and a strong management team? Well this also you'll have to figure out for yourself based on the tools that I shared with you in this video. Please remember that you can use this framework across all the stocks in these two sectors. In fact you can use it on any other sector for that matter. Now please note that mine is not the only method out there of investing in these stocks. There could be other methods also. However if you want to invest the way that value investors like Ben Graham and Warren Buffett invested then the method I discussed in this video comes very close to it. This method prevents you from making two cardinal mistakes that most investors end up making. These mistakes are either investing in bad quality stocks or overpaying for a good quality stock. Therefore avoiding these errors is half the job done. The other half has to do with the brain power and the effort you apply to your investments and whether you get a few huge market crashes in your career that you can take advantage of. Let me know what you think of this approach in the comment section. Also please do not forget to like the video in case you found it to be useful. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye and take care.